Prima just dropped their May updates today and in this video I'm going to do a quick run through of all their cool new features you need to take note of. Okay, let's go. The first new feature is previewing. Prima has done some updates to the preview feature so that it's much easier to preview the different breakpoints in your Prima websites. Previously, when you preview a design, it's just the, the width and the height at the top here and the design itself so you have to manually resize it to see how it looks across different breakpoints or just select the breakpoints from your canvas preview it to see how it looks but in this new update framer added a drop down at the top next to the width and the height so that drop down houses the different breakpoints that you have so when you see when i select i see the different breakpoints that i have so i have the laptop i have the the tablets and all the, those different breakpoints so that's a very useful feature now you don't have to be going back and forth between your canvas to just check the the different breakpoints you have and they also added a shortcut that allows you to easily switch between the various breakpoints or navigate through them by just clicking on command and comma to go back to a previous breakpoint or command and full stop to go to the next break point. So yeah, that's a pretty neat feature and you should take advantage of it. Now the next one is variables and this is something that I'm personally very excited about because I was looking forward to this for the longest time. So let's just start by creating a simple frame so I can demonstrate it to you. Right, so let me convert this into a component and just say frame. Now the new update has to do with the radius and the pattern. So I'm just going to start with the radius. Previously, when you create a variable for the radius, it could only be for all the corners of that radius. But now with this new update, you can set a variable for the different corners of that radius. So I'm just going to name this as radius. And then when I exit, you see that now I have access to all the different corners of this frame to set custom radius for them. Right, so that's a pretty unique feature and personally like I said I'm very excited about and I'm going to take advantage of it a lot. Aside the radius, they've also done the same for padding. Right, so if I should take something like this button, right, previously you couldn't set similar to the radius you couldn't set um, custom padding uh, for the different sides of something like a button right so but now with this new update you can set custom padding for the different sides of your button so if I create this and I go out of this you can see now I can set different padding for my button without having to do one for all the sides. So again, this is something I'm going to personally be using and you should take advantage of it as much as you can. Now the next feature is text stroke or text border, however I choose to call it. Right, so what that basically means is that now you can add strokes to your text styles. So what you need to do is just come to the properties panel, select your text first, come to the properties panel to the section that says text click on the plus and just select stroke and you can give your stroke any color so I'm just going to say white and then I'm going to change the fill of this to black so you see this is how it looks so this is something very cool and I'm sure you can find various use cases for it so this also leads into the next updates with this new one they've added support for the mask um, feature that I introduced not too long ago so you can also add mask to text right so you can just go to the styles section click on the plus and select mask and then once you do that it adds some masking to your text and i'm sure once you play around it you can see that you can do some unique designs with this mask for example i can do something like so this is not even uh, anything major something like this that makes it feel like my name here is coming from behind this so yeah this is this is pretty cool uh, you can explore it and see what you can create
So yeah, that's pretty much it for this May updates. And these are the key things that I think you should know. I'm sure as you practice and as you combine them in your workflows, you can come up with some pretty interesting websites or designs in Freeman. As always, my name is Samuel Alote. I'll catch you next time.